वेलकम बैक गाइस नाउ इन दिस वीडियो लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद अ प्लाज्मा सेल डिसऑर्डर्स व्हिच इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज प्लाज्मा सेल डिस्क्रेसियास वी नो द प्लाज्मा सेल्स आर कमिंग फ्रॉम द बी लिम्फोसाइट्स ओके द बी लिम्फोसाइट्स now whenever they are activated they will be changing into the plasma cells the plasma cells are the ones which are going to produce the antibodies okay antibodies are the ones which are going to act like absorbents the antibodies are the ones which are responsible for killing the bacteria or antigens i should say so plasma cell uh, disorders the first plasma cell disorder that i want to discuss here is called as multiple myeloma So what exactly is the problem with the multiple myeloma? Now we we don't know the reason why. Okay, we don't know the reason why. This condition is having high levels of interleukin six. That's a key word. High levels of interleukin six. This high levels of interleukin six is going to it's going to stimulate the plasma cell growth. Plasma cell growth. Now these plasma cells. Okay, the plasma cells are going too much. Plasma cells growth is too much. Now these plasma cells are going to produce antibodies. Okay. antibodies but all antibodies are of one single type they are all monoclonal antibodies okay they are all monoclonal antibodies there are one single type of antibodies okay which lacks the antigenic diversity they are all single one single type of antibodies okay the problem is that these antibodies they will go to the osteoclast okay they will go to the osteoclast on the osteoclast there is a receptor called as a rank receptor okay there is a receptor called as a rank receptor normally rank receptor is stimulated by rank ligand rank ligand is produced by the osteoblast okay let me put it this way so imagine this is osteoclast the bad guy okay the osteoclast which is going to cause the bone resorption what is this cell this is the osteoclast now on the surface of the osteoclast there is a receptor this receptor is called as a rank receptor now this rank receptor is activated by rank ligand Now this rank ligand is produced by which cells? Rank ligand is produced by osteoblast. So it's the osteoblast which produces the rank ligand. Now this chemical rank is going to go and activate the rank receptor. Now when the rank receptor is activated, then only osteoclasts are going to perform the bone resorption. This is something physiological. Now what happens? in multiple myeloma is the neoplastic plasma cells the neoplastic plasma cells producing these antibodies these neoplastic plasma cells will come and activate this rank ligand okay the plasma cells are activating this rank ligand so what happens now there will be uncontrolled too much bone resorption whenever there is a too much bone resorption there will be lytic punched out lesions lytic punched out lesions which is seen on the x-ray when you see the skull it will be lytic okay the whole like in small 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 like you know the you know the punching machine right the punching machine so on the skull you can see this punched out lesions so when this is a the keyword whenever you see this lytic punched out bone lesions you should always think about multiple myeloma even there are some other cancers okay there are some other cancers where there can be punched out lesions without um, with a rash which is seen in the t cell cancers okay t cell chronic leukemias that's a total different thing but whenever you see listen the word the lytic punched out bone lesions classically they are talking about multiple myeloma okay so this multiple myeloma it's a cancer right it's a multiple myeloma it's a cancer it's cancer of plasma cells there is too much plasma cell growth too much the plasma cells are crowding out the bone marrow okay it's a most common It's the most common primary bone cancer. Okay, most common primary. Of course, metastasis is the overall most common, but most common primary bone cancer is going to be multiple myeloma with lots and lots of monoclonal antibodies. So when you perform a test, which is called as serum protein electrophoresis (SPEP) serum. protein the protein in the serum serum protein electrophoresis gel, gel electrophoresis okay so this is something going to be normal in the serum you are going to have first high amounts of albumins later followed by globulins different types of globulins alpha alpha 1 alpha 2 globulins beta globulins gamma globulins okay this is how okay this is albumin 
and last you are going to have the gamma globulins gamma globulins are nothing but antibodies now what i want you to know is sir in this condition multiple myeloma you are going to have lots and lots of gamma globulins lots and lots of antibodies of course they are bad antibodies they are monoclonal antibodies but you are having high so in multiple myeloma you are going to have a picture something like this so high amounts of gamma globulins so there is a spike there is a gamma global spike this spike is called as m spike there is m spike where m spike m spike in serum protein electrophoresis which proteins are elevated gamma globulins globulins are protein these are the antibodies monoclonal antibodies okay so this is a point which i want you to know so the bones are going to be involved there is mainly punched out lytic bone lesions so the patient is going to have bone pain he is crying with the pain bone pain severe bone pains so uh, the bones are getting resorbed right because of the osteoclastic activity the bones are getting resorbed so what happened to the blood calcium levels blood calcium levels are elevated that is hypercalcemia so the patient with multiple myeloma is going to have hypercalcemia that is going to be seen so what else sir? what else are the problems with this see these patients are having lots and lots of antibodies too much amount of antibodies are there but they are useless they are good for nothing they do not have any antigenic diversity so here these patients are at increased risk of increase risk of infections and that's the most common cause of death okay that's the most common cause of death in multiple myeloma patients in multiple myeloma usually multiple myeloma is going to be seen in older individuals these individuals who have multiple myeloma they will be getting recurrent infections with these infections usually they will die what else i have to teach you is so these patients are having high amounts of proteins okay high amounts of proteins in the blood which proteins the gamma globulins the monoclonal antibodies so as the high protein is there these proteins are going to stick to the rbcs rbcs actually have a zeta potential okay the charge okay the rbc is having the charge negative charge uh, which is going to repel one rbc from other rbc okay the cells are not going to stick okay rbc is like they do not stick with one another because they are having some potential there is a charge over the surface which is called as zeta potential whenever there is too much amount of protein in the blood the protein is going to neutralize this charge okay so protein neutralizes charge on rbc so how the rbc is going to look like on the smear rbc is going to pile up one another the one rbc is going to sit on the other rbc okay now rbc are becoming sticky now they are called as rolex so they are called as rolex r o u l e a u x rolex formation okay so rolex formation is going to be seen on the smear that's the one thing so apart from rolex formation see in this multiple myeloma yes antibodies are getting produced actually even physiologically uh, there is some amount of extra production of the light chains okay in an antibody there is something called as a heavy chain which determines the type of antibody and there is also called as something called as a light chain okay so in an antibody what you are going to have is something called as a heavy chain as well as light chain okay heavy chain determines the type of antibody and light chain usually there is a little bit over production of the light chain okay light chains uh, are going to be produced they will be leaking into the kidney and where they are reabsorbed but here in this condition which is called as a multiple myeloma there is too much production of this light chain okay too much too much production of this light chain in antibody light chain now these light chains they will go to the kidneys and then they are getting filtered and they will come out in the urine now in the urine you can see this light chains which are called as the benz johns proteins so there will be first of all protein urea okay there is something called as a protein urea so these proteins which are coming out are nothing but the light chains okay there are nothing but the light chains these proteins which are seen in the urine are called as benz johns proteins now this benz johns proteins sometimes they are getting accumulated in the kidney okay they are getting accumulated in the kidney that can lead to the kidney failure 
Okay, so these benzene proteins they are accumulated in kidney. Okay, so such kidney is called as myeloma kidney. Okay, myeloma kidney and it's a risk of renal failure. Okay, there is a risk of renal failure with such myeloma kidney because this light chains are getting accumulated within the kidney. Um, the kidney will try to reabsorb, so it's not going to occur at the end of the day. So renal, renal function will be greatly compromised, so renal failure can occur. And these light chains, this is abnormal protein, right? These light chains will start to get accumulated in the tissues. Okay, will start to accumulate in the tissues, of course, in the kidney, but also in other tissues. So that will lead to amyloidosis. Okay, that will lead to amyloidosis. Which type of amyloidosis? AL type of amyloidosis. Okay, remember L for light chain. Something like that, okay? So, AL type of amyloidosis. So, these are the points which I want you to know for your exam. So, the patient who is having multiple myeloma, it's the most common bone cancer. It's the most common primary bone cancer. See, high levels of interleukin-6 are going to be absorbed, which, which is going to stimulate the plasma cell growth. The plasma cells are going to produce a monoclonal antibodies, which are good for nothing. They are not good. So, there is, they are lacking the antigenic diversity. So, the patient is going to have the recurrent infections and the, that's the most common cause of death. See, these neoplastic plasma cells, they will stimulate the rank ligand. Okay, they will stimulate the rank ligand on the osteoclasts. Okay, so the osteoclasts are going to cause a excessive bone resorption that's going to cause punched out lytic bone lesions. And the patient is also going to have hypercalcemia as the bone is getting broken down as it is bone resorption. The patient is going to have hypercalcemia. Okay, that's the important thing. Hypercalcemia, lytic bone lesions, okay, Benzijon's proteins, primary AL type of amyloidosis, okay, myeloma kidney. All these are the important things which I want you to know regarding the first plasma cell dyscrasia that is multiple myeloma. Now, there is one more condition which exactly looks like multiple myeloma. Exactly everything looks like multiple myeloma. Uh, what does I mean by multiple myeloma? It means it's actually considered as a precursor stage of multiple myeloma. There is uh, no lytic bone lesions. Okay. There is no, nothing serious. But only one thing which is observed is M spike. See, there is one more condition where there is going to be M spike. That condition is called as MGUS, monoclonal gamma pathy. Okay, monoclonal means again in this condition there is monoclonal gamma means gamma pathy means antibodies. Monoclonal antibodies are going to be there, but we don't know the reason. Unknown reason. Monoclonal gamma pathy of undetermined significance. Okay, so which is short form we can call it as MGUS. So MGUS. Now in this condition called as MGUS, what do you see? In this condition, MGUS, again, there is albumin, alpha chains, alpha, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta globulins, and gamma globulins. Again, one more peak is going to be there. Okay, one more peak is going to be there. See, this uh, peak is because of IgG, IgE antibodies. In, we exactly don't know the reason, but these patients are also going to have, again, EM spike. So, if someone asks, EM spike is going to be seen in, EM spike is going to be seen in multiple myeloma. Also, in one more condition called as monoclonal gamma pathy of unknown significance. Then, why we are not calling it as multiple myeloma? Because M spike is there, just like multiple myeloma. And even these patients, sometimes, even these MGUS patients, even these patients, they can, in the future, okay, I, in the future, they can develop multiple myeloma. Okay, 1% of the time. Okay, they can develop the multiple myeloma. But why we are not calling it as multiple myeloma? Because, see, there is no lytic bone lesions. Okay, so far, there is no lytic bone lesions, no hypercalcemia. Okay, uh, no bone pain. Okay, no benzene proteins, no proteinuria, nothing. Okay, these things are not there. So, done. So, monoclonal uh, clonal gamma pathy of unknown significance is completed. The next condition, which I want you to know, is called as third condition, Valden. Valenstrom macro macroglobulinemia. Okay, Valenstrom macroglobulinemia. Now, in this condition, see, actually it's a lymphoma. Okay, it's a B cell lymphoma. B cell lymphoma. 
Okay. So what's the problem? Macroglobulinemia. What is the biggest antibody? The biggest antibody, the mega antibody, the super big antibody. It's a pentama. What is that antibody? It is IgM antibody, right? It's IgM antibody. So in this condition, which is called there is a B cell lymphoma where there is too much production of too much, too much production of IgM antibodies. So again, if you do SPEP serum protein electrophoresis, again because of too much amount of antibodies, see there is a macroglobinemia, macroglobulins, IgM antibodies are going to be too much elevated. So much, so much IgM antibodies are there. Okay. So again, you are going to have M spike. Okay. M spike is there because IgM production. So in M bug, M gas, M spike is there, multiple myeloma, M, uh, M spike is going to be there and valence of macroglobulinemia also, M spike is going to be there. The important points which I want you to know here is patient, it's a lymphoma, right? So generalized lymphadenopathy is going to be seen. Generalized lymphadenopathy is going to be seen. This person doesn't have any bone related problems, lytic bone lesions, hypercalcemia is not going to be seen, but M, M spike is going to be seen. Because of this IgM antibody, this is a big antibody, the patient is going to have hyperviscosity. Okay, hyperviscosity of the blood. Because of this hyperviscosity, the patient is going to have headaches. Okay, as well as blurring of the vision. Blurring of vision. Okay, and such hyperviscous blood. In such hyperviscous blood, the platelets are also not going to uh, like uh, form platelet blood properly. So these patients are also at risk of bleeding. Okay, because the platelet aggregation in such hyperviscous blood is not going to happen properly. So yes, there is a risk of bleeding in these uh, patients. Okay, hyperviscosity is going to be seen. The viscous serum is the one which is going to be responsible for a platelet a defect in the platelet aggregation, which lead to the bleeding. So these are the points which I want you to know. Okay. So the treatment for this condition is we have to remove that IgM antibodies. That IgM antibodies, whatever are there, we have to remove. What how can we do that? Plasma pheresis. Okay, plasma pheresis is the treatment done for valence of macroglobulinemia. So with this, we have completed the three plasma cell discretias. The first one is a multiple myeloma, important points, lytic punched out bone lesions, hypercalcemia, bone pains with monoclonal antibodies, SPEP is going to show the I, I, M spike, okay, M spike. There's going to be Benz-Jones proteins, myeloma kidney, AL type of amyloidosis, all these are going to be seen. Monoclonal gammopathy of unknown significance, M spike is going to be seen, but this is not multiple myeloma. How can we say this is not multiple myeloma? Because there is no hypercalcemia, no Benz-Jones proteins, no lytic passed out bone lesions, no AL, AL amyloidosis, nothing, okay, just M spike is going to be seen because of elevated antibodies. If you leave this person, there is a chance that these patients can end up in multiple myeloma, but very rarely in 1% of the cases. Valence of macroglobinemia, it's a lymphoma, B cell lymphoma, that B lymphocytes are producing high levels of IgM type of antibodies. This IgM type of antibodies are going to be responsible for hyperviscosity and that hyperviscosity is the one which is going to cause the uh, visual abnormalities like blurring of the vision, headaches, okay, these things, the treatment is going to be done with the plasma phoresis. So with this, we have completed plasma cell discretia. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.